two, eleven, twelve. Bar! <laughs> Sailor Brew and Barbecue. Uh, today, happy 4th of July. It's 4th of July weekend. You might hear the festivities going off in the background. And for this weekend, special, we're going to do some Berkshire County rabbits on the grill. And what we've got here are two cottontail rabbits. They were harvested up uh, one town over from here in Savoy, northern Berkshire County in uh, western Massachusetts. Uh, you can see they've already been uh, cleaned and quartered. We've got the front, the back, and the hinds. Two of them. This guy was a little bit uh, leaner and longer than the other one. Uh, first, we're going to brine this thing. Come on over here to the ingredients, Jess. Um, basic turkey brine uh, will work. Your favorite turkey brine. Uh, a brine is definitely going to help rabbit, especially wild rabbit. Wild rabbits tend to be a bit gamey, um, and the brining uh, we'll do this overnight. We'll take away that uh, gaminess uh, flavor that can that can come from the wild rabbits. In this case, one gallon of water, one cup of salt, uh, a little bit of garlic powder, some fresh ground pepper. I like uh, what they call the rainbow pepper. That's the black, white, green, red, you know, all the uh, peppercorns, freshly ground. Uh, rosemary, thyme, and parsley. And uh, for the brine, I'm going to kick it up a little bit Cajun style with some Slap Your Mama, one of my favorite uh seasonings cajun seasonings that is and also you cannot forget some homebrew beer preferably homebrew beer your favorite beer would also suffice uh for the brine so let's make uh i guess let's get started we'll go ahead and come on over here jess we're going to uh add our salt basically all our ingredients to one gallon of water once again make sure we don't lose these all right our garlic, rosemary, thyme, and parsley. I call that the Scarborough Fair minus the sage. And as far as the Cajun goes, we're going to go with uh, about a big, a big fat tablespoon of the Slap Your Mama. This was actually a little bit less than one full gallon because we're going to finish off that gallon with full 12 ounces of home brewed beer. This beer happens to be a Kolsch, Drunken Sailor's Clipper Kolsch, which uh, this is this year's version of it. Last year's version I do have posted uh, earlier on the on the page for anyone who wants to uh, see it. So we're going to give this a bit of a stir generously. Uh, we're going to go for probably a couple of minutes to stir this thing up. Then we'll uh, Get the rabbit in there, let it sit overnight, and then we'll start a cooking. Alrighty, we've been stirring for a couple of minutes here. It's pretty well uh, constituted. We're going to go ahead. Well, it smells delicious. That rosemary really adds a lot of aroma to it. Come over here, Jess. Take out the... Uh, you can see here, these are your tenderloins. We're going to leave the silver skin on uh, for now. We'll be stripping that off. Uh, before we add our rub tomorrow, but for now, right in the mixture. Put you back up a bit. There we go. You can see them all coming in here. Front legs, more front legs. There's the last one. Oh, your fireworks going off. Alrighty. Well, there we go, folks. That's going to sit overnight. It's just a good brine. Uh, We'll see you in the morning. All right, so here we are the next day. The uh, rabbits have been brined uh, overnight, about 12, 14 hours. Uh, after the brine, I've rinsed them uh, thoroughly with cold water, and uh, I've cleaned up the, uh, the tenderloins. Uh, I've removed the silver skin, and what I call the uh, slimy skin. I'd love to know what that is. There's a, if there's a biologist or a rabbit expert that knows what that slimy skin is, uh, I'd love to know just as a nice little fun fact. Uh, but before we go on the grill, what we're going to do is make uh, a little marinade. Marinade is going to be some, uh, we'll just go over here, Jess. We've got a uh, little bit of red wine vinegar, uh, juice of a lemon, some olive oil. 
over here, uh, pretty close to the uh, the brine. Some rosemary, uh, some thyme, parsley, pepper, salt, garlic, and some lemon zest. So we're going to mix all this up in the bowl to the uh, red wine here, Jess. We're going to add about a cup of oil. And my neighbor is mowing the lawn again. He likes to do that about five or six times a week. Uh, we're still trying to figure out why. I'm thinking there's uh, some mental issues going on. There we go. In the bowl. Once again, your oil and red wine vinegar. To that, the juice of a lemon. And our ingredients. Lemon zest, garlic, rosemary. That's pink Himalayan salt. I really decided to geek out on this one. There's our thyme, parsley, and pepper. And there we go. Don't worry about the mess. We'll pick it up later. So I'll give this a little bit of a whisk. Okay. Nice. Oh, it smells delicious. Okay. Leave that there. Now, to the bag. We'll put the rabbit in the bag first. These are the back legs. On front legs and uh, incidentally once these are cooked up you could hand these to someone and tell them it's a chicken wing they wouldn't even know the difference and then my favorite part the uh, the tenderloins oh these are tasty so here they go in the bag one more little stern okay now to the bag Very nice. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to zip this up, get the air out of it. All right, shake it around a little bit. Be careful, there's a couple of sharp bones in there. Don't want to puncture the, uh, the plastic, but just in case, looks pretty good, huh? Just in case, we're going to throw this back in the bowl in case it leaks. There we go. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the fridge for a couple hours. In the meantime, we're going to go take a quick walk on the Appalachian Trail. And when we come back, it's uh, grilling rabbit time. Okay, so it's been a couple hours. We had a nice trip on the Appalachian Trail. And uh, looks like these pieces of rabbit are all good to go and ready for the grill. So let's go ahead, walk them over to set up. We've got a charcoal side going with the black iron, nice and hot. What's nice about this setup here, you can see I got it all the way down low. So we don't want to go crazy with the heat. And I also put a couple of chunks of uh, apple wood on there to add a little bit of smokiness to what's going on in the pan. So uh, lightly greased with some canola that can handle the heat. And uh, here we go. We're going to go big legs first with a nice sizzle. These aren't going to take long to cook. You can smell that rosemary cooking away, very fragrant. Front legs. I'll put the tenderloins on last because those are the best. Those are the best for last, of course. There we go. It's not going to take long at all. Oops, there we go. And one last little piece. Stay right there, Jeff. What I'm going to like to do with these, throw a couple of onions on the fire because that's how I roll. And 
that's yummy. So let's close this up. We'll wait just a couple of minutes. We'll open it up, take another look, see what happens. Okay, it's been about two minutes. We're going to go ahead and flip these over. Come on in, Jess. Let's take a look. It smells delicious. The rosemary is really picking up some serious aroma. You hear that sizzle? You can smell that apple wood. See the wood uh, or the uh, meat receding off of the bone there on the legs. Very nice. Flip that tenderloin over. Oh, very nice. There we go. See how these onions are doing. Oh yeah. And then, there we go. Look at that. Nothing like a grilled onion. Okay. I think what we're doing is only about another minute. And then we'll do a little flash on the uh, on the grates, give them some crust, and that'll be it. I need. We just might be about done here. Let's see what they look like. Nice and slow. Nice. There we go. Let's pull. Go ahead and pull this off the heat. We get one more little flip. What I'm going to do is throw them back on the coals off of the pan, just for making a little bit of crust. In the meantime. That black iron is going to hold the heat and keep them nice and hot. And a little flip there, a little flip there. Looking really good. Oh, it smells delicious. All right, let's go ahead and pull these onions off. Because grilled onions are awesome. And now, one last thing. Let's get these for a quick sear. Now this is going to be nothing more than getting a little crust because these are already cooked, especially these tenderloins. Tenderloins over here, you see those pieces of rosemary, got a couple of legs, a couple more legs, don't fall through, there we go. And that I'm going to eat myself. Okay, let them sit. Okay, let's give them a flip. See? Just a little crust. That's all we want. And that fire's pretty hot. Nice. That's exactly what we want there. Just a crust. I mean, we're talking not long at all. There we go. Go one last one. There you go. Oop, that's hot. Hot fire. There we go. Okay, now keep it on there, Gus. Perfect. Back over here. Like I said, that black iron still nice and hot, so these will keep them warm. Oop, just lost a piece. Okay, we're going to let these sit covered on the gas side with no heat, just to keep them warm. Let them rest just for a minute, and we'll be right back to eat. Cut. All right, well, here we are. We're all set. Plated up. Nice, easy checker fries out of the bag. They look scrumptious. Haven't had those before. Looking forward to them. One of my favorite places to go when we're down in Daytona every year. But let's go ahead and check out some of this tenderloin that's gonna be the first piece I'm gonna try with uh, some onion we'll give an idea what uh, this uh, is gonna taste like I'll tell you what the rosemary is really popping and it smells delicious let's go ahead mmm now that is some good bunny Elmer Fudd would be proud Mm. Anyways, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and finish off this plate. You guys go do whatever you're going to do. In the meantime, if you like the video, go ahead, hit the like button down below. And as always, have a nice day. Let's not forget these.